Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Father, for bringing us to another session of Bible study. The entrance of your world give it light. It give it understanding to the simple. I'm requesting that your world will give understanding to your children. Your children will know your ways and walk righteously. I thank you for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. We are considering another topic or another title of our study in the book of First Kings chapter 2. We have taken so many lessons from First Kings chapter 2. Yes, because the Lord has given us things to understand there. Last week, we considered God's judgment against murderers in the Old and New Testaments. And we took our text from First Kings chapter 2, verse 5 and 6. That concerned the issue of Joab, the captain of David's army. Today, We are considering the rewards of brotherly kindness. The rewards of brotherly kindness. And we're taking our text from First Kings chapter, chapter 2, verse 5 to 8. And that centers on the case of Basilei. Basilei brought some presents to David when he fled from Absalom, his son. And David remembered this in his dying moment. And instructed his son Solomon to ensure the children of Basile, who had died quite long time, should be rewarded more for the kindness of their father. Brother Lay did a good thing. Let's seek David's instruction to Solomon about this man in First Kings chapter two, as we read again from verse five. To seven now. First Kings chapter two, verse five to verse seven. Moreover, thou knowest also what Joab the son of Zeruiah did to me, 
And what he did to the two captains of the hosts of Israel, unto Abna the son of Na, and unto Amasa the son of Jetha, whom he slew, and shed the blood of war in peace, and put the blood of war upon his guidle that was about his loins, and his shoes that were on his feet were taken. Uh, six to seven do therefore according to thy wisdom and let not his whole hair go down to the grave in peace verse seven is our study of today but now show kindness unto the sons of Basilei the Gilead died and let them be of those that eat at thy table for they for so they came to me when i fled because of absalom thy brother thank god david did not forget the brotherly kindness of Basile. he didn't forget it that kindness sank into David the man really did acceptable work it sank into David that although David rewarded the man even in his lifetime he felt it was not enough He felt even after his lifetime that man's children should be rewarded because they joined their father in, the, in displaying exceptional kindness to David. See it again in verse 7. But show kindness unto the sons of Basilei, the Gileadite, and let them be of those that eat at thy table, at thy table. For so they came to me when I fled because of Absalom, thy brother. The father trained these children in good works. They had a good father who taught them on acts of kindness, acts of charity. They went with their father to do this to David. And David would not forget them. They were still alive. David was dying. But these children were still alive. These good boys. These good men were still alive. They should show them kindness. They are, they are good people. Show them kindness for their father's sake. Show them kindness for their sakes also because they joined their father in the kind works that he did. In Hebrews chapter 13, Hebrews chapter 13 I read from verse 1 the Bible tells us saying let brotherly love continue be not forgetful to entertain strangers for thereby some have entertained angels on unawares remember them that are in bonds as bound with them and them which suffer adversity as being yourselves also in the body laid brotherly love continue think good towards your brother in times of his affliction 
in times of his adversity in times of his sickness in times of his opposition in times of enemy attacks against him feel with him sympathize and empathize with him speak kind words to him pay him visit do good works towards him yes mobilize good actions mobilize people around him because at that time he feels lonely he feels deserted at that time satan is telling him many things including that god had disappoint has disappointed him including that he had of, he has so offended god that god will not accept him again including that he may not recover his state again your presence will heal him your presence will comfort him your presence would put a thought of truth into his heart a smile into his mouth laughter in his mouth so let brotherly love continue actually what we're going to study is the case of brotherly love but we are studying to consider the rewards of brotherly kindness because this man did a thing we're going to study the reward david said make sure this man is rewarded to his children how many years had david lived to reward this man when he was alive it was not enough don't tell me 20 years only it was not enough for david david must reward the children of this man this man is good i'm telling you brother sister do good that your children will inherit your good life that even when you die your children will inherit your goodness now let's go and consider the whole story how it happened what did Bazale do that ain't him such a great blessing from this king even to his children in the book of second samuel chapter 17 second samuel chapter 17 verses 27 to 29 and it came to pass when david was come to mahanaim that shobi the son of nahash of Rabbah, of the children of Ammon, Amaki, the son of Amiel, of Lodeba, and Bazalei, the Gileadite of Rogelim, Rog brought birds and basins and eighteen vessels and with and barley and flour and pushed corn and beans and lentils and pushed pearls and honey and butter and sheep and cheese of kind that were with him I mean of kind for David and for the people that were with him to eat for they said the people is hungry and weary and thirsty in the wilderness in the wilderness 
they are now in the wilderness what provocative gifts yes these people in it provoked david to good works let us consider one another to provoke to good works what provocative gifts now let's consider the characteristics of the presence supplied by Bazale and others but he was the chief man because he was a great man he was a rich man he goes if you look at this thing it was bountiful supply bountiful plenteous see it yourself the quantity verse 28 and 29 yes they brought beds for people to sleep on and basins to be used as utensils in the forest in the wilderness and eighteen vessels pots and all things that can be used to make food to take bath and wheat and barley and flour and pushed corn and beans and lintels and patched poles food these are full foodstuffs supplied in abundance and honey and butter yes to bless their bread to sweeten their lives and sheep and cheese of kind for David animals to kill they, they made life convenient does it tell us learn to increase the quantity you give to people there are those who don't give at all but there are those who give but they don't give bountifully they give very little learn to increase the amount if you have it this man was a great a great man a rich man what was he going to do with the stuff he had the money if you have it give more even in the house of god during this pro pro program special program project give more as the lord has given to you because you shall be rewarded for it he brought they, they brought them for david and for the people that were with him the people that were with him it was compassionate given compassionate see the language in verse 29 verse 29b for they said the people is hungry and weary and testy in the wilderness wilderness they didn't plan to go there no houses there no houses there no sleeping place there and these people have been forced to go into the wilderness and little ones went with them 
Little children, even sucklings, run along with them. What are they eating? What are they eating? Compassion. Do you sit down and think towards your neighbor about the clothes which she does not have? About the shoes which he does not have? About this and that which they do not have about your relations church brethren brothers and sisters around do you sit down and think at all about them or you think only on yourself the bible says let every man look not on his own things but every man also on the things of others don't live selfish life for god so loved the world it means god was constantly thinking good towards the world God was constantly planning of what to do for the world. Brethren, if God so love you, ye ought also to love one another. It means be thinking good towards your brother, towards your sister. Be planning good. Plan some good things to do. Add much prayer. That your good works should not be suspected. Pray. Use wisdom. That your good works should not be rejected. But love thinks good. Love thinketh no evil. It plans good. So you can see the compassion of these people. Basile and his children. And those that followed, the people is thirsty in the wilderness. The people is hungry in the wilderness. That's the King James English. Something has to be done. And that motivated him to this bountiful gift. May God give you this grace in your life. That you would think good could be towards your wife, towards your husband, towards the children, towards your neighbor, towards your relations, towards the brethren in Christ. Think good about them. So they were comp it was a compassionate gift. The vision. And most of the supply came from Basile, although others participated. That's why he was figured in the reward. Others, either they conveyed the things he bought, the others might have just conveyed the things that man supplied. Yes. Again, check this gift. It proceeded from pure love for David not, not political David was king Bazale was not playing politics if I give him if he succeeds to come back he will remember me no there was no selfishness there was no politics there was no thought of payback in him you verify this in Second Samuel, chapter nineteen, verse thirty-one. Second Samuel, chapter nineteen, verse thirty-one. And Basile, the Gileadite, came down from Rogelim and went over Jordan with the king 
to conduct him over Jordan. Now, Basilei was a very aged man, even fourscore years old, and he had provided the, the king of sustenance while he lay at Mahanaim, for he was a very great man. This scripture was reminding us of the Basilei. When the king Solomon was coming back from the wilderness to Jerusalem to show you that this man was a lover, an old man of 80 years, traveled the distance to cross the river Jordan and to go and rejoice with David that the war was over and that he was coming back to his kingdom he went as far as there for love's sake not for reward do things for love's sake not reward you hurt yourself actually when you do things and hope for the for payback and the person is not able to pay you back and you become angry or the person comes to do a mistake over your life and you say look at him the man that i spent all this i spent all this i spent all this do it for god this man did it to manifest the life of god in him more than just that see what he told david in verse 20, 36 when david wanted to reward him because see verse 33 and the king said unto Basilei, come thou over with me and i will feed thee with me in jerusalem and in 36 thy servant will go a little way over jordan with the king and why should the king recompense it me with such a reward i'll just go a little while and come back forget that i should go with you because you are prov I have provoked you in love and you want to pay me back don't bother don't bother I didn't give, give you that for payback Jesus said it he said when you will do good gather the maimed the poor and the the ones that have challenges in various forms in life and feed them bless them they will not give you be able to give you back and the father will take over them to reward you because what a man cannot give you back god will give you back and when god takes over to reward you he knows how to reward you his reward goes beyond money it goes to various various network in your life so this man said no why bothering about rewarding me for this no don't bother i'm going back home let's go again to see this man Basilei. Basilei's present to david was not to seek rewards of any kind as I've told you from David no but there are things I want us to learn from this man Basile. look at it in 2nd Samuel chapter 19 from verse 33 and the king said unto Basile come thou over with me and I will feed thee with me in jerusalem basilei said unto the king how long have i to live that i should go up with the king unto jerusalem i am this day four score years old 80 years old and can i discern between good and evil can thy servant test what I eat or what I drink? Can I hear any more the voice of singing? The voice of singing men and singing women? 
Wherefore then should thy servant be yet a burden unto my lord the king? Thy servant will go a little way over Jordan with the king. And why should the king recompense it me with such a reward? Let thy servant, I pray thee, turn back again that I may die in my own country and be buried by the grave of my father and of my mother. But behold, thy servant, Chimham, let him go over with my lord the king and do to him what shall seem good unto thee. And the king answered, Kim Ham shall go over with me, and I will do to him what that which shall seem good unto thee, and whatsoever thou shalt require of me, that will I do for thee. Can you see? So, when Basilei came the second time, to welcome David from the forest, from the wilderness, to cross back to Jerusalem, David said, Please, Daddy, Papa, go with me to Jerusalem. Just rest for the rest of your life. I am going to take care of you. I'm going to feed you until you die. Because I appreciate your love. You did marvelously. And I want a person like you to be rewarded. I will do it myself. I will want to reward you. Yes. You want love from people? Show them love. He that must have friends must make himself friendly. When you show love with people, for people, they will show you love. Let's consider one another to provoke unto love and good works. This man provoked loving David, appreciative David. He provoked him to love by what he did. That's what God wants us to do to one another. So, when David now said, come along with me, I will reward you. And the man said, Mazalel said, how long have I to live that I should go up with the king unto Jerusalem? What lesson do we learn from this man? Bazalei was a rich old man who's, who lived with the consciousness of death. The consciousness of death. Hence, the consciousness of eternity. The consciousness of the future life. The consciousness of the world to come. A rich old man. This man. May God make rich people. Old people. To be like him. The Bible says it. That. In Psalm 90. Verse 10. Psalm 90, verse 10. The scripture says, The days of our years are three score years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be four score years, Yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and will fly away. 
Bazale was aware of this. Here scripture says, the days of a man where the man can be strong and still active is it is at 70 years the man can still maintain his strength to 70 years but after 70 years if you see a man playing strength playing strong it might take him to 80 after that forget it forget what remains after that life is gone that man at 80 should be preparing to go in any moment he will be gone it, it shall be cut off completely from him yeah and will fly away Basile was at 80. What remains him of life? That he should be thinking again to leave his place and go to Jerusalem because of pleasures, because of a higher life, because he's going to get a better house or what are you talking about? Or because of the favor of the king, he'll be celebrating the favor of the king. He said, King, forget that one. I'm 80. I am 80. And another thing is, the Bible says in verse 12 of Psalm 90, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Basile knew this scripture and was a wise old rich man. What is he going to do in Jerusalem when he's going to die? Soon. When he had reached the peak of life, he had finalized with life at 80. It's a standard truth. Nobody can disprove it. Whatever you are doing from after 80, you just, we are whirling time. Actual time on earth is gone. Actual time is gone. Then what am I going to do in Jerusalem? What am I going to do in the politics of this world? At 80, what am I seeking for? It is time to prepare for eternity. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. You are an old man and you are still struggling over this, this world. What are you going to gain again? What will you do at 80? In your age, why are you not resting? I'm planning for a better future. In fact, planning beyond this world. Apart from planning for your children, if you have any, how they should live, how it should be better for them tomorrow, you should plan for your soul. Where will you spend eternity? Are you right with God? This is what should matter. Now, see what he told David again. Basile. In 2 Samuel. See what he told David. Again. He said in verse 35. I am this day four score years old. And can, and can I discern between good and evil? Can thy servant test that? Test what I can eat or what I drink? Can I hear any more the voice of singing men and, the, and singing women? Wherefore then should thy servant be yet a burden unto my lord the king? 
Misha, see the things that give human beings pleasure. See the things that give the young men pleasure. See the things that give the middle-aged men pleasure. What are they? Sweet things. That which will give the, the tongue sweetness. That which will give the body sweetness. That which will give the eyes pleasure. He said, I am 80 years old now. If you give me a fantastic bed to lie on, and give me mat on the ground to lie on i will not be able to tell you the difference because all those pleasures i'm not feeling in fact i may choose the mat because to help my old bones better so what is why am i having pleasure to distress what is evil from what is good at 80 years Can my tongue be taking pleasure with uh, sweet things? Uh, the diabetes of life that troubles old people, that makes them to run away from sweet things. I sh am I going to now be looking for sweet things? Is it sweet now? Oh, okay, I'm healthy. But is it sweet things I'll be looking for? To drink, to eat, my tongue looking for something sweet? no i'm of age those things have passed completely oh can i hear anymore the voice of singing men and singing women music because the young man what moves him is music everywhere he's nodding his head is music he can stand up in the and be hearing the music alone and be dancing in the open you wonder whether it's madness that is troubling him there that's the young man because you are young these things appeal to you he said i am old these things don't appeal to me anymore if i go with you now is it not these things you're going to give me is it not these things you are going to display before me. Please, don't say I should go with you. I will be a burden unto you. This is so. Because these are the things that blind people's eyes. That is why. The Lord tells us in Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 1. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth while the evil days come not now the years draw near when thou shalt say i have no pleasure in them my friend my child young man all these things you are playing about you will come to say if at your old age they have been of no pleasure all of them all these things you're delighting young man your delight is in women sleeping with women at 80 whom will you want to sleep with that mind is not there that mind is not there if you have any strength at all you'll be packaging it for yourself to live you will say i have no pleasure in them woman at, as, at your old age these things you are struggling after that makes you forget God, you will desert them. They will have no meaning in your life. Then you will end up like a fool that didn't hear counsel when you were young. 
that was facing a destructive direction a direction of no favor yes a direction that has no end completely so learn from this man that the pleasures you have said in your heart you will come and regret them you will regret them but they have occupied your precious time they have occupied your time of serving the lord they have taken over your strength thou shall love the lord your god with all thy strength but they have taken over your strength they have taken over your mind thou shall love the lord your god with all your mind but these mundane things have taken over your mind you will come to say i don't need them i have no pleasure in them the wise man is the one that turns to the essential now leave those things repent of them and turn to that which is essential for you that's what you need to hear you need to understand yes verse 8 of, Ele of Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 8 but if a man live many years and rejoice in them all yet let him remember the days of darkness for there shall be many. All that, all that cometh is vanity. He lives many years. Yes. All troubles have been following you anyway. But when you come to the time you don't need this thing, you will now remember you wasted your years. You were not created for this thing. You were not created to pursue women and their body. You were not created to pursue money to accumulate them. You were not created to be just be eating, eat and become a gluten. You were created to serve the Lord, but you wasted it and have spent your time in vanity, uselessness. Thank God Bazale knew himself. He was wise. He knew the scriptures. I will not go with you. I'm going to prepare myself for I know the times and seasons I am in. At all age in life, Bazalel understood that he is a burden. So, at all age, life is a burden prepare as a result one must prepare to lay the burden on god see what Bezalel let say in verse 35 of second samuel chapter 19 verse 35 i am this day four score years old and can I discern between good and evil? Can I serve and taste what I eat or what I drink? Can I hear any more the voice of singing men and singing women? Look at what he said the last there. Wherefore then should thy servant be yet a burden unto my Lord the King? Old men are a burden burden to the children burden to the government burden to whoever is around burden even to the church old age pushes you to a life that you cannot live alone you need somebody to lay yourself upon you need somebody your children if you have children you will want them to be closer because you need them in your life 
if you have anything anyone around relations what you will need them closer what if you don't even have good ones or have none or even have can their service be enough no the old man needs god most because he cannot help himself the younger ones always think they can do everything i can do this i can do this i can do this but the old man cannot so it is only on god can he cast his burden look at it in first peter chapter 5 verse 7 first peter chapter 5 verse 7 casting all your care upon him for he cared for you be sober verse 8 be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour the devil is his trouble continues to all age you must cast your care upon god but what if you don't have him all age is a misery because you come to discover man cannot even help you enough the sicknesses of life how many have enough time to dedicate to you to care for you the problems of life how many what about the tastelessness of life life is just tasteless mommy what will you eat i don't want to eat anything what do you want to drink i don't want to drink anything do you lie down don't leave me i don't want to lie down okay sit properly please leave me alone i don't want to sit properly then who will take care of you i'm telling you it is when you have god beside you that all age is useful <laughs> i had the story of a woman in my village that in the night you will hear her voice because she was an old woman crying god take my life god take my life what are you leaving me for my means have died you still left me why are you leaving me take my life go every day because all age is a burden where will you go to you don't need hey, i want to go to museum the pleasures of museum has gone where again you want to go to i want to go to to store to which store i want to go and buy what in the stores what will you go and buy mommy mommy sit down go and buy because we don't want vehicle to beat you down the road so what do you want her to do now except she has god for friendship except she has god for fatherhood except she has god for doctor all age is misery prepare you will come and say i have no need of these things you're running after the world for get god in your life prepare for eternity with him and prepare for all age with god i have made and i will bear even to worry here i will carry you that's the promise of god so where god should be everything about you everything about your life should be god he made you he made all age he is the god of all age he will carry you for he had carried he has carried many in this life very important in ecclesiastes chapter 12 i read verse 1 verse 7 and 8 remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth while the evil days come not nor the years draw near when thou shalt say i have no pleasure in them verse 7 then shall the dust return to the earth as it was and the spirit shall return unto god who gave it 
verse 8 let's chorus this together verse 8 one two go vanity of vanities said the preacher all is vanity no man recognizes this than the old man what's the what's the value of the houses in various countries that he built and bought will he go there anymore no he can't go there then they are built for what what's the value of the money accumulated in the bank will he use them in active life no then what are they for where did he labor for them what about the people of course he has employed people he has myriads of people working with him in various places industries companies like this wherever they are does he know what they eat how they treat his money it is not his business because he has no concern with him he doesn't even know the value of money anymore that is not his life then what did you spend time doing you wasted your time outside god if you were of god you would have turned them to god ah then we'll say the your life is like the palm tree that bringeth forth fruit even in old age if you have known god to sell those things and push the money to god i mean to where the gospel of god will be preached to true preachers true churches true ministries if you knew this it would have been better but you didn't know it you are dying a, a man of uselessness upon earth and in heaven you are not going there vanity of vanity no man understands it than the old man all things are vanity i'm telling you Basile did good with his riches this would give him a good remembrance after his death. that's one of his wisdom i told you teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom what's this thing what are they waiting for there is a servant of god there who is in need of them my children pack those things and let's go pack them in their in, in their numbers in their quantities in their abundance I have, I have. And let's go and show kindness to a servant of God in, in the wilderness. And let us go. He was wise. What are rich men doing with their money? What are these rich old people doing with their money? They don't know God to invest in Christ. They don't know. Some end up because they are fools their minds are not thinking strong again they end up supporting occultism with money to worsen their own judgments that they would encounter soonest they waste it Just because they don't know what to do with the money again nobody has told them they don't even understand that god very unfortunate and god too did not bother about their money dirty thing altogether how many of them received them righteously so you see you see the whole thing you see how that man wasted his life you see how that woman wasted her life and is dying naked i came to this world naked i'm going back as this other prophet said i don't know what is waiting for me now because i don't even know where i'm going that is lie that is lie he did good he did good with his money look at it in the book of second chronicles chapter 35 verse 24 to 27 let me read from verse 23 and the Acha shot at king josiah and the king said to his servants have me away for i am so wounded his servants therefore took him out of that chariot 
and put him in, in the second chariot that he had and they brought him to Jerusalem and he died and was buried in one of the sepulchers of his fathers and all Judah and Jerusalem mourned for him and Jeremiah lamented for Josiah and all the singing men and singing women spake of Josiah in their lamentations to this day and made them an ordinance in Israel and behold they are written in the lamentations now the rest of the acts of Josiah and his goodness according to that which was written in the law of the Lord and his deeds first and last behold they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah this man lived a wonderful life and he left a good name after death they remembered him constantly they remembered him constantly singing men and singing women continued to sing songs on the goodness of Josiah several years even to the time this writer was writing this record to in this in, in the book in the law of God singing was continuing on Josiah because of his good works Joe everybody was testifying of him only remembered by what they have done the memory of the wicked shall be rotten a good name is to be desired rather than silver and gold because there is time what will silver and gold do after your death it shall vanish they shall share it over thieves will break through and steal but a good name for the works you have done only remembered only remembered by what you have done you will fade away with life you were young you are growing old white hair have come on your head very soon not long you will not be you will not be anymore we will not see your physical being but we shall only remember the good works you have done we shall remember they shall point us to it to them people shall live to testify Bazale was remembered by the good works he had done and they transferred it to their children to his children the children inherit inherited the goodwill the dividends of his works and investment in life only remember your die a wicked man your name shall be rotten your name shall be rotten die righteous you will be remember you'll be remembered the bible says i will give the eunuch a name even the eunuch that fear me that walk in righteousness and holiness they don't have children but i will give them a name that will not be forgotten that will not be forgotten in the world by their righteous deeds i will give them a name better than of those who have sons and ch children i'll give them the eunuch a name so bazalel knew that let me invest in things that matter good works the lord says teach them that they should do good works let your light so shine before me that they may see your good works it is your good works that will bring glory to your father which is in heaven not wicked deeds we're laying women on the road to rape them breaking into people's houses to steal your name will be rotten die quickly and get and vanish from the earth let your name never be remembered let it, let your life be like a bad dream 
because you kill all the, the your relations in witchcraft you maimed them you oppress them and they are waiting for your dead die your name shall disappear from the family that's it so he did good works in proverbs chapter 22 verse 1 proverbs chapter 22 verse 1 a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold good name good name Bazalel made his son Kimham to inherit the goodwill of his good works of his righteous and faithful life look at it second samuel chapter 19 verse 37 let thy servant i pray thee turn back again that i may die in my own city and be buried by the grave of my father and of my mother but behold thy servant kimham let him go over with my lord the king and do to him what shall seem good unto thee and the king answered kimham shall go over with me and i will do to him that which shall seem good unto thee and whatsoever thou shalt require of me that will i do for him and again look at it in that's first kings chapter 2 verse 7 but show kindness unto the sons of Bazale. Let them inherit the goodwill of their good father. Let them inherit the goodwill of their good father. Let them inherit the dividends of their good father. He invested for them in life. What then? Invest, what investment is more than righteousness? What future can you give your children more than righteousness and the rewards of righteousness that shall follow even after you're dead? God is the rewarder of righteousness. Many things he did to the children of Israel was because of his covenant with Abraham. I don't do them for your sake. But because of my covenant with Abraham. Why don't you do righteousness? To live a better inheritance. Everlasting earthly inheritance. I call it everlasting because when, when will these children finish this blessing? As long as the kingdom remains David's kingdom. And he could get a king that will hear. These have become noble family to follow kingship to serve in kingship why don't you leave good name for your children that when they say you are the son of who i am the son of this person oh i know what your father did please come here come here come here see me in the office i know what your father did to me your father was the reason why i finished my school your mother i know what your mother did leave a good name it's better than even money money can be torn into pieces by your children when you die it can be stolen your children may even die as a result of of the money but good works good name will follow you so he said take him harm and david went beyond killing him to other children because this man is good this man is good if a man that re that gave earthly thing could so be treated what about the one that gave heavenly things 
if the man that gave you the what sustained you and delivered you from the attack and evil of another man he did it what because of absalom david was in the forest he sustained david in the forest what about the man that gave you the gospel of salvation that preached the gospel of righteousness to you that labored for yourself for your soul salvation from hell will you now come to fight him will you join the people that are criticizing him that are fighting him it shows you're not in your senses Is that the way you will reward him? Is that the way? That's why Paul was writing to the Corinthian Christians. Remember them that have labored among you. Reward them. Have they sown to you spiritual things? Is it anything for them to reap carnal things from you? Fleshly things? that you are tightening your hands you cannot bless people who saved your soul who delivered you from satan who prayed for you and broke yours and delivered you from dying sicknesses you cannot reward them your ungrateful person worst of all you turn again to fire then you are a dog then you are is you are swine do not cast your peers before the swine lest you will trample it under feet and turn again and rent you respect your teachers that's what scripture says consider them that labor among you are over you in the Lord and respect them give them honor high honor because of their work over your life and do it not in slavish fear no be at peace among yourselves god is a god that loves people to appreciate he loves that you should learn to appreciate see david appreciated you too learn to appreciate learn to say thank you thank you for doing this brother thank you for blessing my life thank you for doing this for my family thank you for touching my soul thank you for being the reason why i have come back to jesus that i even know the way learn it learn to say thank you were they not ten healed where are the nine so none returned except this samaritan to come and say thank you lord what happened to human beings what's happening to your heart why is your heart so stony that you cannot realize good that is what the Lord wants us to learn. In him, in Basile, is the scripture or was the scripture fulfilled? In First Timothy 5, let's start from verse 24. So many sins are open beforehand, going before to judgment. Uh, and some men sin, they follow after. We said this about Joab. Now, let's say it on good men. 25. Likewise also the good works of some are manifest beforehand. And they that are, that are otherwise cannot be hid. The good works of Bazalek came up immediately. For the righteous shall be rewarded in, on the earth. Not only in heaven, but on the earth. The righteous 
shall be rewarded on the earth. Don't think that eh, it's only in heaven. No, on the earth too. See Bazalel. The reward of Bazalel. I don't know whether it took one month. When did he send this thing to David in the wilderness? Suddenly, there was war between David's men and Absalom. And Absalom was killed. And then, David was returning. How many weeks? It followed after immediately. And David went to, the, to Jerusalem and quickly lifted up the sons of Bazalel immediately. But some may not follow immediately, but they shall be rewarded. Bazalel immediately. Immediately. Some may not be immediately, but they shall still manifest. Finally, my brethren, what lessons do you take home for yourself? In this respect, Galatians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9 and verse 10. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Continue your works. Continue your good works. Although they may not be appreciating it. You are doing it because God made you to do good works. You must show the presence of God in your life. Who caused the rain to fall upon the just and the unjust? Continue. But the God of reward shall meet you on the way. You shall reap. As we have therefore opportunity. Let us do good unto all men. Especially unto them who are of the household of faith unto those who are in christ all men if you have opportunity do good to all men be a good man when tabitha died the widows brought the cloth that she gave them and presented them before the lord i said no this lady died too young she must come back to life she came back to life her good works testified of her her good works testify of her. As you have opportunity in life, do good to those people you came across. Even if it means to come from your car and push the car of another person that needs pushing so that he can start. Do it. Or what else do you do? Do it as you have opportunity in life. Is it to help pay somebody else's school fees? Somebody's child's school fees, if you have the money, do it. It's going for to your record. What good things? Is it to supply food for somebody, for a family? Is it to supply clothing to someone? Ah, but if they know I did it, will they take it? There are other ways you can give than they may not even know who did it. But the Holy Spirit shall record it on you. As we have opportunity. As we live among ourselves. As we interact with human beings in the world. Let's do good to all men. Especially those who have been born again. Who are children of God. Whether of your fellowship or another Christian body. As long as they are children of Jesus. Answer them. If opportunity comes your way. For we have one father. That's what we need to learn. Again, sympathize with those in adversity. Hebrews chapter 13. I read verse 3. The Bible says, Remember them that are in bonds as bound with them. And them which suffer adversity as being yourself also in the body. Feel with people. Feel with people. If it's possible, cry with them. For Jesus wept with those that wept. He wept with Mary and Martha. He wept. 
Don't be too big to cry. Don't be too manly to cry. It is a message in itself. It will sing love into hearts. Feel it with people. Impartage. Go there. Speak a word. A little word of kindness. Show some deeds of mercy. A text message. A telephone call. Sending somebody else to go and greet this for you. Ah, he thinks about me. I do. So, remember them. It will ease them up and win them from Satan. Again, let the rich brethren learn to do good with their riches. In the book of 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17 to 19. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17 to 19. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy that they do good that they be rich in good works ready to distribute willing to communicate laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life that is it tell those who have money let them learn to give people let them learn to sponsor people to assist people to even build houses for people if you have money to do that what are you going to do with the money what are you going to do i told you you will come to say i have no need of these things oh that i were wise when i was growing up with money i would have done this and done this and done this now should songs be going to heaven on my account Songs should have been going to heaven now by, on my account. But I didn't do it. Charge them. What, look at the house of God. What are you doing with your money? What are you doing? With, there's much to do for God. And we need money to save souls. Because money answered all things. Money to travel. Money to build more accommodations for people. Money to provide more things variously money to sponsor missionaries money for this what are you doing with your money charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded don't be proud don't put your confidence on money that cannot that you can't trust because riches develop wings and fly as eagles to heaven you say, where is the money? Where is the money? You can't find again. That's what the Bible tells us. Release them, release them. Release them. That foil that you pour inside a drum, instead of pouring inside the vehicle to make the vehicle move and walk, you just put it in drum. Leave it there and come back and check the foil. All will evaporate. All will evaporate with time. You left them all up on there. Why not pour it where it can be used? Charge them that are rich in this world. Charge them. Let them learn to do good works. Let them learn to distribute and be rich towards God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy do good works and be rich in good works ready to distribute your, your your possessions willing willing not by force willing willingly doing it there are people who go and keep money until they become rust judgment is waiting for them it became become rust yes in this way as you give out 
you'll be laying up in store for yourselves a good foundation against the time to come that you may lay hold on eternal life this man in this distributing laid foundation for his children to inherit his goodwill to inherit his good works by his distribution and yet he had not allowed money to rule him the pleasures of money he is preparing for eternal life money didn't overcome Bazale. that is what you need to understand god does not accept kindness shown with a polluted heart do it with a singleness of heart do it show kindness not because you need a reward from it not because you need a recognition don't buy church leadership with money don't buy church position with money that's wickedness that's wickedness you want to remove god and fix yourself with money you want to use money and remove god from the church you want to use money and bring worship to yourself because attention will leave god and come to yourself he that pays the piper dictates the tone that's what you want to do then no it's for the glory of god do it in righteousness we have heart Basile has a good heart and his children enjoyed the goodness of their father children pray for your father evangelize your father obey your father let that man be a good man that will lay a good foundation for your future pray for him help him do good encourage him in in well-doing you are helping yourself in the future let's rise up upon our feet and thank the lord for this wonderful study he has brought us to Basile. he did so good david remembered him even when david was dying and said his children should inherit it thank you lord receive this into your heart the message is there in record go and listen to it again it's there in the internet go and listen to it again in the youtube go and listen to it again get the copy go and listen to it again train yourself to walk in this way old man invest for your future don't think of the world and the pleasures of this world. Old woman, don't look back to the pleasures of this life. Vanity of vanity. It cannot appeal to you anymore. Your tongue cannot test. No. The beauty of music that shakes me, you have passed it. All that matters now is God and your future. What do you do for your children? What do you do for your soul? It is a life with God that will answer these things. Thank you. Thank you, my Father. Worship you, my girl. Let your name be praised, O oh Lord. Let your children walk in this, in this way. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God. And is profitable. For doctrine, 
for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto good works. Thank you, Lord, for the scriptures that have come to us. Thank you, Jesus, for the scriptures. Worship you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I worship you, my Father. This, thank you for this. Thank you for opening our eyes to see the word of life. For giving our heart to understand the world of righteousness we will do we will perform we will observe them in Jesus name thank you we will practice your world We'll practice it. We will conform ourselves to your world. We will conform ourselves to your world. Give me that old time religion, old time religion, old time religion is good enough for me. Give me that old time religion, old time religion. Old time religion is good enough for me. It was good for Basilai and David. Was good for Basilai and David. Was good for Basilai and David. Is good enough for me. Old time. Old time, old time religion, it is good. In Jesus' name we pray. In the wonderful name of Jesus we pray. Our Father and our God. We thank you for this blessed message. Thank you for opening our eyes to knowing the relevance of kindness in our Christian journey. Oh Lord God Almighty, they had to give, they had to show kindness after the order of Basilei. Give as many that have listened to this message tonight in Jesus' name. Oh Lord my God, I pray that we will count it relevant to give while it is day. That we will spend our youthful strength for you in accordance with your word. Oh God, we bless you for your servant that you have used. You have made him, oh God, to expose these scriptures to us. Father, I pray that the fountain of love, 
the blessedness of the message Jesus have given to him will not cease. It will continue to flow until we are overflown with your world and to act them out in kindness. In the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we ask, O oh God, as we mix with human community, as we join or enter into the world to transact our fears, God, that this kindness will announce us. It will announce that we are of you, that we are of God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Be glorified, Lord. Be magnified, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, Revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4348. You can also reach us through our email address, holinessrevivalmovement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe Savior. Jesus, I, I believe. believe.
You are the living Savior. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. You Lord. are my Lord and Savior. I believe. 